Today we're going to show you how to take apart a Sportcraft air hockey table for moving it. You want to be real careful not to damage any of the surfaces in this thing. These things have a lot of particle board in them and particle board is covered with some type of thin vinyl and any place that you snag it, it puts tears in the vinyl. So we're going to show you how to do this very carefully so that we don't damage the table while we're trying to move it. On the Sportcraft model, a lot of this siding is very, very thin so you have to be careful that you don't want to booger it up by titting things when you move it. It'll actually have a way that it kind of snags. So just kind of be careful that none of it gets messed up while you're trying to move. The first thing you want to do is this overhead bar. It has three screws on both sides around this ring. So you'll go ahead and use your screwdriver or your drill gun and go and take these screws out. Next, go ahead and very carefully, without dusting up the vinyl, lift this out. And there's going to be wires that come out of this one side. So easily fold it down on top of the table without scratching anything. And there's actually three wires that come up through this hole. When you come down underneath, you'll see the hole where those wires go through. And they actually come over to this module right here. And this is where you can actually unplug them. There's two of them. Two little small ones that go for the digital. They pull out the side of this little module. And then you have the one bigger one. And the bigger one, there's actually a little button there you push. You can see how that button works right there. So you push that button down, then you pull it out. Now with the wires disconnected, you can actually just pull these three wires right up through the hole. And now this piece is totally free and able to be removed. And be very careful not to scratch it. You want to set it over on some place that is very safe. All right, Shumpy, you got it? Okay, make sure you don't scratch it. Okay. There's actually four bolts on each side of these legs. You only need to take out the four that are along the bottom. The other two are actually where the frame is screwing the holder for the leg up to the frame. So once you take out these four, this leg will actually slide out of here. I went ahead and took out the two on this side first. Now I'm going to take out the two on this side. But at this point, though, I've got a couple of kids holding the corners to make sure this thing doesn't fall on me. You have to have an Allen set type of six-sided socket to be able to get these Allen set bolts out. Basically, you can just put it in there and just start matching it away. The sides on this thing are just particle board, and they have these metal clips that are actually holding the thing together. And so you don't have a lot of strength on the edge. We can support it with this on the edge, but we're just going to be really careful that we don't actually kink this. Now with those four screws out, you just lift up one end of the table, and the actual legs will come out. But you have to be very careful not to scratch those either. Okay, so now it's time to take out the other two legs. One thing we did is we went ahead and put a prop in here, so now that we can actually hold this one side up, and as we take the screws out there, we can actually just pull those legs out so it doesn't get like kind of tippy or anything. So there again, we're going to take out just the bottom two screws on both sides, and then this leg will just drop right out of here. The problem we're having is that this support right here is still a bit too close to the leg for us to be able to get our wrench on there. So we have two choices. We can either move the support back, which probably will work, or we can actually make a little bit more clearance to be able to get to those bolts. So in this situation, we're actually going to just make a little bit more clearance here so we can get those last two bolts out. scratches it because you know your kids are going to scratch it up anyways but what we're going to do is as soon as we get this thing moved we're going to use some Gorilla Tape because I saw where they can actually actually tape the boats back together with Gorilla Tape and then your kids will be great they can just play with it they'll just have a little bit of a black line across here but that won't hurt anything. Now I have the access to be able to get to these last two bolts so we're going to go and take those out and, um, again be very careful not to scratch this I know kids are a little bit rough on these things but we want to get as many more years out of this thing as we can. Got these last two bolts out. Now I can get this leg out of here. Besides, it has this like piece of plastic that kind of inserts in a groove right here. And if it actually ends up coming out, you can just actually just reinsert it like that. The next thing we're going to do, because we have this gap right here, is I've got my Gorilla Tape. My children tell me that Flex Tape is actually the one that works better. But flex Tape I've always... is better. They sawed a boat in half. Okay, they think that they sawed the boat in half with Flex Tape, but I always thought it was Gorilla Tape. So, so anyways, we're just going to take our Gorilla Tape. And we're going to tape it right here, just like that. I'm serious, your kids will never know the difference. It'll still play just the same. So now let's run a piece all the way across the middle here, just like that. Okay, in our application, our staircase is only a little over two feet wide, so we're going to have to find another avenue to get this thing down, because this is a little bit of a narrow spot here. Actually, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it out the side window and lower it down safely without damaging it. 
when actually when you go to move it, make sure you take all of your hand things off and your puck because you don't want to lose those in moving. Okay, make sure you don't scratch these things when you move them. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. Make sure you don't forget the scoreboard because you need that. Let the kids play. And then count the legs when you do it, come do them too. So there's one, two, three, four. Also, the kids will love watching TV when they play air hockey. So make sure you ask the people when you go to get one if they actually have an extra TV. Hey, make sure, because kids always like to have cold drinks when they play air hockey, so you'll need a refrigerator at the same time. So air hockey tables, cold drinks, and refrigerators go together. <laughs> Whoops. Have fun cleaning that up, Dad. Yep, we're going back to the house. It looks like we weren't careful enough on the moving, so I guess we kind of did an oopsie. But we could try and straighten this thing out, and I'm sure the kids could still play with it. But I think maybe instead we're going to go ahead and have a, a campfire tonight. When you go to burn these things, you have to be very careful because there's lots of plastic around these things that puts off a really bad smoke. Whoa, kids, don't do that. That's toxic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See how that really smokes out like that? Yeah. You don't want to breathe any of this... Um, you don't want to breathe any of this smoke because it can really be bad for you. I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. 
That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.